Hi, I'm Tyler Van Heeren. I'm an engineer here at Statsig, and today I'm going to be talking to you about running experiment reviews. We think that there's sort of like three components that go into having a really, really successful experimentation program. Um, the first is tooling, and you know, generically, we think we're pretty good at that. Um, and then there is the sort of like processes uh, side of house and the culture side of house. And so those two actually tend to be really, really, really important. Um, there's a lot of sort of like academic um, things that go into experimentation um, where like, you know, especially if you're like a, a large, large company, um, you might spend a lot of time thinking about like, hey, like should we be applying these adjustments to our results? How do we, you know, make it so that like this aspect of our metrics are like more reliable? Um, but all of that sort of goes out the window if uh, people across the company are just shipping things without considering any of them. Um, and so building the muscle to like have everyone across your company like sort of understand experiment results, think about them, talk about them, uh, is really like one of the hardest parts of like running successful experimentation programs. And this is something that I think is like a lot sort of easier um, to, to like instill uh, as, as the company itself is smaller. You know, if you're a three person company, um, it's really, that's really cool. And it's really cool to be able to just like chat through, hey, here's this experiment I ran. And then like, you know, everyone across the company instantly has context um, when they're considering future things they want to like experiment with. Um, they will all think about that. Um, but you know, as you have more and more engineering teams, BM teams, design teams, um, all building you know disparate things, how do you actually make it so that you know everyone is benefiting from that sort of scale of experiments that are happening? And so, um, one thing that's important or useful to consider um, going into it is just that like we have biases, and sort of that's why these like sort of objective approaches uh, exist. And the first one is that like we like to ship things that we built. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, I like building things, uh, and I especially like giving them to people. Um, but, like, and you know, everyone, why are you building this thing if you don't think it's gonna be good, right? Um, like everyone always builds, or hopefully <laughs> is building things because they think they're gonna be really good for your product, really good for your company, um, they're gonna be successful. And so, if you come at your data knowing um, that what you built is good, it's really easy to find reasons to justify why it's good. Um, you know, I might find this like metric and be like, oh, this metric's up. Yeah, like that, that sort of, I can reason why my, my good thing would have caused that good metric to move. Um, or, you know, metric is down, I can maybe reason why it's like, oh, it's down, but I don't think that's, I think that's noise, um, things like that. It's, it's really easy to like have your confirmation bias kick in and like cherry pick out of data. And so that's why, in general, like having hypotheses up front is important, um, where it's like, hey, I have this metric that I think I'm going to move with this experiment. Um, actually, then showing that you moved it after you said you would up front um, is really, really powerful. And in general, that's like sort of why the scientific method exists, right? Um, is like to have this sort of structure around like, hey, we're going to come up with some hypothesis first, um, then we're going to design an experiment, and then we're going to you know, observe the results and sort of draw conclusions from it. And so uh, the question then is sort of like, how do we scale that culture? Um, again, thinking through what that looks like at various like sort of scales of company, right? Um, I think it's still really useful for like 10 person companies to have that sort of forum where they can share out results in like a sort of structured way, um, but it comes like immensely more important um, the, the larger the, the company is. And so that sort of like large company culture scaling problem is not something that is unique to experimentation or experiment reviews. Um, you know, when you are training new interviewers or even new managers, um, you have like processes in place that sort of like help get them up to speed, help them understand, oh, like this is how we think about things at our company, um, things like that, and like share that culture between themselves. So I think it's actually pretty useful um, when thinking about like scaling an experimentation culture to think about how you're already approaching like those other categories. Um, is it, you know, hey, I'm a 10 person company, so 
it really is just I sit down one on one and be like, hey, this is like how I think about interviewing, um, or is it like, hey, I'm a you know ten thousand person company, and this is like our new manager pipeline, or like these are sort of like how we have them review their feedback that they're giving to folks, um, things like that. So I'm actually going to pull from um, sort of how Amazon and Facebook uh, both approach experiment review and like how I think that's sort of like indicative of other parts of their culture. And so experiment review is sort of just that. It's a forum for people to bring experiments to and say, hey, I ran this thing. Uh, these, this is what I said was going to happen. These are the results that I saw. Um, here's like how I conducted it. Here's what I observed. And then critically, um, it's a place for people who are like more experienced at running experiments to give like feedback around that. Um, you know, give feedback on like, oh yeah, like it makes sense that you're claiming that this metric would move and then it moved. Um, or it's like, hey, you know, I, I think we're probably just like cherry picking noise a little bit. Um, the other useful thing there is like just bringing up metrics that might have been missed. Um, like, uh, you know, hey, like I have these, this collection of performance metrics. Um, can we make sure that we aren't like hurting these performance metrics, even though it wasn't like something that you explicitly called out like when you were setting up the experiment? Um, when there are things where it's like, oh, we hurt this metric by this much, and we improve this metric by this much, um, how do we think about that trade-off, right? Like, Statsic as a platform doesn't have a mechanism to be like, oh, a 1% performance reduction is equal to a 3% increase in revenue, right? Like, you could spend years and years, I think, trying to develop the perfect formula that accurately captures all of your possible metric movements. Um, but it's a lot easier to just have, like, hey, you know, here are people who have run experiments at the company before. They have thought about these trade-offs, like, with sort of this, the <laughs> their powerful human brains. Um, and can give feedback on like, mm, I don't think we can ship this thing because it hurts this thing, even though you have this like good win, or given how big this win is, maybe we can afford um, afford to ship this experiment, and then we'll just also have to work on performance after the fact, things like that. Uh, the other really important part of experiment review is just like thinking sort of at a user level, um, if this behavior is like the right thing to do, um, like does this make sense for what we're trying to drive? Um, you know, are we like increasing this like really low calorie thing, um, and we might get some like short term wins out of it, but like we think long term it's not the right answer. Um, things like that. Again, it's like you need sort of that human touch of people who have been around your company, who uh, know your metrics sort of inside and out. Um, so that can be really experienced engineers, really experienced PMs, really like veteran data scientists. All of them are like people who like it's good to get opinions from. Um, especially as like folks are newer to the team, newer to running experiments, things like that. Um, and they can also call out things like, hey, like I, I think there's going to be a really strong novelty effect here. Like, can we check this this chart? Um, things like that. It is sort of just like giving teams a sort of a structured way um, that really scales across them um, to think about like when we run experiments, let's make sure that we care about these things. And the other cool thing uh, about, or really the coolest thing to me about experiment review is just like the opportunity to share out learnings. Um, so I got uh, my career started at Facebook. Um, and so as like a brand new out of college engineer, um, I knew very little about like product building, right? Um, so just attending these experiment reviews was like a really effective way to be like, okay, cool. Like here are things that people were running. Here's like the, the changes in you know metrics that they were seeing as a result of them here's how they were thinking about those metrics um, it's just really really good experience to sort of like supercharge um, like that like producty muscle um, in folks um, and that includes experiments that don't ship right uh, I think like that can be like sort of a, a dangerous thing that happens um, at companies where it's like cool like celebrate wins for sure um, you know if you improve revenue like that's that's great um, but make sure that like people aren't like squirreling away or hiding away um, experiments that don't work. Um, the reason is like everyone 
I think, comes to the table with reasonable ideas about what's going to work. Um, so, you know, when one of these experiments doesn't work, it's not li like, why would we have ever thought that would work and it didn't work? It's probably like a reasonable thing to have thought would work that just didn't line up with user behavior for some reason. Um, or, you know, maybe ran into like this performance trade-off um, and things like that. So given that it's a reasonable thing to have thought would work, more people are probably also thinking similar lines might be interesting or useful. Um, so actually hearing about, hey, this is why this thing didn't work, you know, here's like future hypotheses that we're developing on top of that for like future experiments that we think can address this part of it. Um, just like getting that context of here's this thing that didn't work, here's why we think it didn't work, um, and here's like how we think it could work, um, like sort of lets you skip a step for everyone else, right? They don't have to try and fail that first time. They get to sort of just like reap those rewards. And so let's chat through how a few companies um, go about running it. Um, Amazon, I think, has a sort of very like centralized approach um, where they have like this web lab quote unquote bar raiser program. Um, this is very like taken from their interviewing program um, where you know on every loop they want to make sure that like or for for all of their loops um, it tends to be sort of localized to the the team that you're interviewing with right um, so some cloud team you're gonna get a bunch of cloud interviewers um, things like that um, but they want to make sure that they're always inserting into those like more localized loops someone with sort of broader experience um, running interviews, or yeah, running interviews, who can chime in and be like, hey, like, I have this feedback around the questions we're asking, um, like process-wise, I think like this thing should be changed, uh, things like that. Um, just like sort of standardizing out that experience. And like, it's a, it's a program where like you sort of get qualified um, to be one of these bar raisers um, by like having completed some certain number of interviews and things like that. Um, and then you can sort of be pulled into these, these loops. Yeah, yeah. And so Amazon took a pretty similar approach to experimentation that they did to interviewing, um, where you know you have these like sort of veteran experimenters, veteran experiment reviewers, um, like and they sort of get deployed in uh, to run experiment reviews. Um, you know, generally still from roughly the same product area, but probably not the same team um, that ran the experiment, um, where they actually have like that sort of wealth of experience and knowledge. Um, and again, it's like sort of this thing that you would like qualify for, right? Um, you have done some amount of experiment review and now like you are one of these like authorized experiment reviewers and if someone wants to ship something, they've got to make sure that they find one of these people and explain their experiment to them. Facebook, on the other hand, I think took a lot more like decentralized of an approach. Um, for them, it was really just like generally, here's a senior data scientist from your team, here's a senior engineer from your team, and they would sort of just like run one of these experiment reviews together, um, where they would also like give feedback on like experiment design um, before launch. Like this is just like sort of establishing on every team a reasonable go-to of like, hey, I've been thinking about running this sort of thing, um, and you know, after the fact, like, hey, like these results don't quite make sense to me. Can you help me interpret this? Um, and again, it was like one of these things where you're very much encouraged to attend, even if you're not like actually presenting here as an experiment or like, you know, one of the sort of veteran leaders on that, um, where like, it's just a good learning experience. And then also just having those extra people in the room, you're encouraged to ask questions about the experiment itself as well. Um, you know, it's not really all on these like two more senior people. It, everyone is encouraged to like have feedback around experiments um, that have been run and like making sure that the right metrics are getting considered. And again, that's sort of how you like build that experience there. Um, so I mentioned that like Amazon's really comes from sort of like their interviewer program. I think like our opinion is that Facebook's is really sort of inspired by like how they think about managers actually, um, where they have like PSC um, cycles where managers will fill out their feedback for their reports, um, but then they don't just give it to them. Um, they actually go into a room with a bunch of other managers from their team, from other teams, and sort of like, you know, calibrate um, to, hey, this person did these things. I think that corresponds to roughly this rating. And then the other managers are encouraged to be like, ah, you know, I think it should actually be one bucket higher or one bucket lower, um, or like that sounds exactly right. Um, so it's again, it's similar sort of forum where it's just like everyone can come with their experiment and be like, hey, I ran this experiment. These are my results. 
this is what I think. And then other people across the company or across the team are encouraged to be like, oh, are you considering this thing? Um, things like that. And so, yeah, I, I think like just having <laughs> um, some sort of forum set up and you know encouraging folks to attend it again, especially even if they're not. Um, running one of these experiments themselves, but are just like, I want to learn about how we experiment at this company. Um, I think it's a really, really useful ritual. I think it's probably one of the most effective things you can do um, to get people across your company you know, thinking about experiments, running experiments, running effective experiments. Um, and yeah, like sort of what flavor of that um, in terms of like, here is like this more centralized approach, here is this more decentralized approach. Um, I think that's something that will vary a lot company to company. Um, but just like thinking about how that adapts to your company, I, I think is, is really, really effective um, for building that experimentation muscle across your company. Thanks. That's all I got.